In this workshop tutorial, we are going to show you how to add content to your ePortfolio, such as text, image, video, and other documents. In our templates, most of the work is done for you. All the modules for your content have already been added as placeholders. You just need to modify the modules with your content. However, for this demonstration, I'm using a blank ePortfolio to show you how to do everything from scratch for when you add new pages to your ePortfolio. The steps that I go over can be applied to modifying the modules that already exist in your ePortfolio. Let's start with adding text. To add text, you first need to add a rich text module to the page. You can do so by accessing the library. The library is a storage area in the ePortfolio system that stores all the templates, modules, and uploaded files you need to build out the pages of your portfolio. On a blank page, there are initially two ways to access the library. Either click the link for add content, or click the blue circle with the plus sign on the lower right hand side of the screen. Either way, you will be able to access the library. Keep in mind that as soon as you add content to the page of your ePortfolio, the link for add content will no longer show on the page, and you will need to click the blue circle with the plus sign to access the library moving forward. Once in the library, you will see the items that you can add to your page. First, we see the tabs for specific content. Next, we see the available templates. And finally, the most commonly used modules. From the modules, select Rich Text. You will be taken back to the page in ePortfolio, where you now see the Rich Text module has been added to the page, replacing the Add Content link. To edit the Rich Text module, you can double click anywhere in the module or click the edit icon. From here, you can start typing or you can copy paste from another source. Once you add your text, you can format it in one of two ways. The first way to format text will be through the settings of the module. Click the settings icon and a menu will open to the left. Under the text option, you can choose the font family, size, and color amongst other options. You'll notice that formatting the font this way will format all of the font in the rich text module. The second way allows for you to format selected text. Make sure the edit icon is active. Next, highlight a word or sentence. Then select one of the formatting options that appears above the module. You can bold, italicize, or underline your text by selecting the bold slash italicize option. You can also choose the palette option, which will allow you to change the font, font size, and color, amongst other options for the selected text. To turn text into a link to a website or a link to a file, make sure you are still in the edit mode of the module and select the text you want to turn into a link. First, we'll select the link icon. From here, type in the complete URL for the website you want the link to go to. For this example, I'll use Google. Decide if you want the link to open in a new window or not, and then finally, click the checkbox. You will see that the text has now been converted to a link. Click the link, and it will take you to the assigned URL. To turn text into a link to a file, make sure you are still in the edit mode of the module and select the text. Next, select the attachment icon. This will take you to an alternate version of the library, where you can select previously uploaded files or upload brand new files, amongst other items that will be covered a little later. For this example, I will choose the Upload File option. In the next window, click anywhere on the screen and it will open up a window on your computer where you can then search for the file to upload. Select the file you want and click Open. You will see the file has been added. From here, click Upload in the lower right hand corner. Once the file uploads, the text will now be linked to the file. Click the link and you will be prompted to open the file in the browser or to download the file. This concludes working with text. Now let's work with images. To upload images, click the blue circle with the plus mark to access the library. In the library, we have three options. Previous uploads, upload file, or take a picture. 
The Previous Uploads option will allow you to access any file that has been previously uploaded into the system. If you have a webcam attached, the Take a Picture option will allow you to access your webcam to take a picture. You just need to allow it to do so. Click the camera icon at the bottom once it is granted access and it will take a picture. Follow the on-screen prompts to add it to the page. For this example, I will use the Upload File option to walk you through some of the features that are only available during the upload. Click the Upload File option. Click anywhere on the next screen and you'll get the same window from earlier that pops up asking you to search for your file. Select your image and click Open. Before uploading it to the page, you can edit the photo. But remember, this can only be done during the upload process. Once it is uploaded, you will not be able to edit it. You will need to upload it again to edit. Click the Edit button, and you will be directed to the Edit Image window. In the upper left-hand corner, you will see three icons, Crop, Circle Crop, and Rotate. Choosing Crop will allow you to cut out parts of the image you don't want. Circle Crop will crop out a circular version of the image, and Rotate will allow you to change the orientation of your image. This comes in handy when uploading an image that was taken in the portrait slash selfie mode of a cell phone. The actual orientation of the camera on your cell phone is in landscape. So if your picture is sideways when uploading it, use the rotate tool to change its orientation. Once you finish editing your image, click save, then done, and finally upload. This concludes uploading an image to your portfolio. Now let's work with video. To upload video, the process is going to be exactly the same as uploading an image. You will access the library, choose either previous uploads, upload a file, or record video. Then follow the same steps for uploading an image. However, you cannot edit the video, and there are two conditions that need to be met when working with video. First, the video needs to be in one of the following formats. WMV, MP4, AVI, or MOV. These are four of the most common video file formats and the only ones that work with your ePortfolio. Second, the video cannot exceed one gigabyte in file size. We get a lot of questions about the length of videos, but that has nothing to do with it. For example, you can have a 15 minute long video with low quality that has a smaller file size than a three minute long video with high quality. So as long as your video files follow these conditions, you can follow the same steps as if you were uploading an image and you should have no issues uploading video. You can also embed video from YouTube. First, go to YouTube and locate the video you want to embed. Copy the URL for the video and then head back to your ePortfolio. Click on the blue circle with the plus mark to access the library. In the library, select the Embed tab. You will see modules for all the websites that you can embed content from. Locate and select the YouTube module, and from the next screen, paste in the URL. Once you see the video preview, click Embed, and the YouTube video will now be embedded on the page. This concludes uploading video to your ePortfolio. Finally, let's work with uploading documents. For this demonstration, I will be working with Microsoft Word and PowerPoint. Access the library by clicking the blue circle with the plus mark. Again, you can choose Previous Uploads or Upload File. For this example, I will choose the Upload File option. Then click anywhere on the next screen and you will get the same window from earlier that pops up asking you to search for your file. Locate your Word document and select Open then click Upload. You will then see the file uploaded to the page. You can repeat the same steps for your PowerPoint or any other Microsoft Office documents. However, you'll notice the files have been converted to PDFs that you can scroll through. So if you have audio files or video files in your PowerPoint, you will want to save the PowerPoint as an MP4 first and then upload it to your portfolio. If you notice a typo or some other mistake in the file, you cannot edit directly in your ePortfolio since the file is a PDF. 
you will need to make the correction in the original program that made it and then re-upload the file to your ePortfolio. If you no longer have the original files, not to worry. You can turn on the file download option in the settings of the module to download the file in its original format. Click the settings icon for the module. A menu will pop up to the left. Under document settings, turn on the display download URL. Close the menu and then click the download this file link. You will be prompted to open it in the browser or download the file. Select download file and now follow the on-screen prompts to save the files to the download folders on your computer. This concludes our tutorial on adding content to your portfolio.